This video is sponsored by Yeti, which will help explain why I'm in a Santa suit assembling sandwiches later in the video. As someone who grew up in Pennsylvania, my favorite sandwich from Philadelphia is actually not the cheesesteak. That designation belongs to the roast pork. So exactly what is in this guy? Let's break it down. The core of this sandwich is thinly sliced roast pork that is then warmed in its juices and placed on a hoagie roll. Then it depends on who you ask or where you go, but the most popular or well-known toppings are broccoli rabe and sharp provolone. And what I love about it is it's just simple ingredients done right. For me, this is one of those sandwiches that the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Now, I wanted to see if I could make a version of this sandwich that is just as good, if not better, than what I could get in Philly. But instead of just recipe testing on my own, I thought, why not actually benchmark it against a couple in the great state of Pennsylvania, which I was going home to for Thanksgiving for a couple days, so I thought, why not stop in Philadelphia? We'll grab a couple. So the first stop was to Denix, which is more of a traditional one, and then the second was to Porco's, which is kind of a modern take on that classic Philly roast pork. Let's go. Denix is located in Reading Terminal Market, one of the best public markets in the US, at least in my opinion, and this is one of the locations that made this sandwich famous, and it's where I first fell in love with it. The menu is quite simple. You have pork, beef, or sausages, then three toppings, the sharp provolone, roasted long hot peppers and greens, which is the broccoli rabe. So those hoagie rolls are topped with a shaved provolone, filled with roast pork that has been sitting in those juices before being topped with plenty of the broccoli rabe and rolled tight. So the keys for this one are the soft but sturdy hoagie roll, the sharpness of that provolone, and no ingredient really overshadows another, and for me, it just has that pure nostalgia factor. Now this is the first Denix I've had in probably three or four years, and after coming back, I think it could use just a bit of acidity and some spice, so I'm gonna keep that in mind for my version. The next stop was a porqueteria called Porco's, a couple miles south of city center for kind of an enhanced version on the classic. They use a broccoli rabe pesto instead of the whole greens, then their signature roast pork, and of course the sharp provolone, and then a charred ciabatta bun as the bread. Now, this sandwich is absolutely incredible too, and I actually think the individual components are better than Denix, but when it comes to the sandwich, it's almost like they kind of compete for attention rather than working really well together. And I also do kind of miss the nostalgia of that hoagie roll. So with our roast pork recon mission done, there's only one thing left to do, and that is make our own. So we're gonna walk through all the components, then I'll meet you guys back here for the taste test to see how this thing stacks up against the ones that I tried. While traditionally the sliced pork used for the sandwich is from a boneless leg roast or a ham, this is not a cut you'll easily find in the grocery store, and I actually did try to get a whole pig leg to debone myself, but I wasn't able to get one in on time, so instead I utilized some more common cuts. One is the boneless picnic roast, and this is actually from the shoulder of the pig, and it typically will be tightly wrapped or tied to keep it together since it's kind of a couple pieces. And it's gonna have more fat than the second cut I got, which is the pork loin roast. So this is part of the pork loin, which is a whole muscle cut, a little bit leaner, but it will be really nice for slicing. Now, whatever pork cut you end up using, the process will be exactly the same. So we're gonna go with a 1% salt dry brine. So in my case, the meat weight was three kilograms or about 6.6 .6 pounds, meaning that we need 30 grams of salt liberally salted over the exterior of both pieces of meat. Now during this dry brine, the salt will work inwards, internally seizing the meat, and it also allows those muscle fibers to hold more moisture when we roast it later on, meaning we get juicy and succulent and tasty meat. Once the cuts are salted, just place that entire tray into the fridge uncovered and let it brine overnight. The next day, we're gonna make a seasoning rub. So every place is gonna have their own mix of Italian herbs, but I wanted to make mine a fairly garlic forward one. So set a mortar and pestle down and add 10 cloves of garlic along with a sprinkle of salt and then just bash that into a paste. Once mashed, add 20 cranks of black pepper, a small spoonful of oregano, a spoonful of rosemary, and a bunch of olive oil before just mixing that together. Finally, just rub the paste on the exterior of the pork, and then we're gonna place this entire thing into a 400 degree Fahrenheit oven and let it roast until the internal temperature hits around 140 degrees when probed with a thermometer. Pull the roast out of the oven and the pork loin got done a little bit faster since it's smaller, and I'm just gonna let this rest for 10 minutes, which will raise a few degrees due to carry over cooking. Now this pork will slice best cold, but instead of just letting this on the counter or throwing it in the fridge where it can actually raise the temperature of the other food you have in there and cause it to go bad, we're gonna place this pork into a freezer bag and then drop it into an ice bath, which will rapidly cool it. 
Then we can just dry that off and toss that into a fridge when we are ready to slice. And again, I followed the exact same procedure for that other roast, just took a little bit longer. So we have the pork ready, let's move on to our hoagie rolls. Since I already have a whole video dedicated to these rolls, let's breeze through this fairly quickly. I did make a couple of sesame seed buns though to see which one I like better. And basically I just took my original recipe and scaled it up by 1.5 times so I could get a couple more rolls out of it. So to start, set a large container over a scale and add 600 grams of bread flour, 9 grams of instant yeast, 12 grams of salt, 15 grams of honey, 30 grams of olive oil, and 390 grams of warmed 1% milk. Then using your hands, just mix that together until no dry flour remains and a shaggy dough has formed. Now cover and let this rest for 15 minutes. We're just gonna let the dough relax. Then after 15 minutes, we're just gonna knead this in the container for about eight minutes. And as always, you wanna test for a gluten window by cutting off a piece of the dough to ensure that it can be stretched until see-through before it actually rips. This is gonna ensure we have some good gluten development. After kneading, cover the dough again and let it rise for at least one hour until about doubled in size. Once that dough has risen, punch it down and divide the dough into even pieces. For this time around, I did 150 gram pieces, but you can do any size of roll that you want to. Once the dough is divided, press the dough into a triangle and once ready, tightly roll the rectangle into a log and just pinch the bottom into a seam. Then you're gonna to toss that onto a baking sheet with some cornmeal on it and just repeat that for each roll. Once the rolls are rolled, place a piece of plastic wrap with some cooking spray on it to prevent sticking and just place those in the oven with the light on to let it proof until doubled in size. This will probably take another 60 to 90 minutes. Pull those rolls back out and we're gonna beat some egg white with water and brush that over the exterior, which is gonna help give it a nice gloss. Then I also sprinkled cornmeal over one sheet of the rolls and did sesame seeds on the other one and we'll have to test to see which one is better later. Now, using a sharp knife, slice the roll on an angle and this is gonna allow that dough to rise a bit in the oven for that oven spring. When ready to bake, place the trays in a preheated 375 degree oven and bake that for about 15 minutes, during which they should get nicely golden brown. Pull those rolls out and just place them on a wire rack to cool before transferring to a bag for storing. So we have the rolls and the pork, so lastly, let's talk toppings. For my toppings, I'm using the sharp provolone, broccoli rob with some diced long hot peppers for a bit of spice, and lastly, you know I had to make some pickled onions. So for the sharp provolone, you probably won't find this at your deli counter, but I did find this in the cheese container right where the Pecorino Romano and the Parm is. At Denix, they had these little slices of the cheese that I tried to mimic that by using a vegetable peeler. And the flavor on this cheese is kind of like if regular provolone and Parmigiano Reggiano had a baby. Now for the pickled onions, again, I've made these countless times, but one part vinegar, one part water and salt is boiled and then poured over some thinly sliced onions. And I did throw in a couple of bay leaves this time around too. Then lastly, we have the signature greens. So broccoli rabe, also known as rapini, is a little bit bitter and nutty, and although they look similar, it's actually not the same thing as baby broccoli or broccolini as it's also known. Now for this sandwich, we're simply chopping it up and sauteing it, but this is really good in pasta dishes as well. Then additionally, I chopped up some long hot peppers. So either roasted or pickles, these peppers are another classic Italian American sandwich topping. And typically these range from around 100 to 1000 Scoville units, which is like four times milder than a jalapeno. So when ready, set a pan over medium heat and add a big glug of olive oil to cover the pan. Once that's hot, add three cloves of sliced garlics and the diced long hots and saute for just about 30 to 60 seconds. Next, you're gonna to toss in a whole bunch of that chopped up broccoli rabe along with a pinch of salt and just let this cook down for about five minutes or so. Now, this has a really unique taste. It's kind of like roasted greens, garlicky, a little bit spicy, and when combined in the sandwich, creates that perfect combination. Speaking of, let's assemble. To assemble the sandwich, we first need to slice our pork. So I did get a $100 slicer off Amazon and it actually works quite well at this cheap of a range, but you can definitely slice this with a knife if you would like. And slice it as thin as possible and here's a little comparison between that picnic roast and the pork loin. Now at Denix, this sliced pork is sitting and warmed up in a bath of the hot pork jus. Since I roasted these and they didn't get off as much juice, I extracted as much of the pork jus that I could, then I tossed that into a pan with some chicken stock too, and then tossed that sliced pork in to warm everything together. To assemble the sandwich, we're gonna slice that hoagie roll in half, 
add a bunch of the sharp provolone to the bottom of that, then add a heaping amount of the juicy roast pork, and then finally that broccoli rob over the top. Lastly, of course, we got to top it with those pickled onions for a bit of acidity, and we are in business. Now, this is a sandwich that deserves to be wrapped up to kind of steam everything and make it cohesive. And it's actually needed in this case because in the season of giving, I decided to deliver some sandwiches to enjoy with my friends with the help from today's sponsor, Yeti. So after wrapping up our sandwiches, I needed to keep them warm on the ride over. So I popped them in the Yeti day trip lunch boxes, which are great at keeping things warm or cold. Now, a plain old bag isn't gonna do for this precious cargo, so I utilized the Yeti Camino tote to load in the lunch boxes, and then using the dividers, I also tucked in a water bottle, some pickled onions, of course, and a bottle of wine on the other side. All we had to do was slap a bow on there to deliver and enjoy. So if you are looking to pick up some gifts for this Christmas, be sure to check the link in my description for the items I used or any of Yeti's high quality coolers, mugs, and ramblers. Thanks again, Yeti, we had a blast. But lastly, let's do a taste test to see how this sandwich stacks up. All right, everyone. So I've been snacking a little bit, but it's like four o'clock and this isn't the first proper meal of the day. Let's dive into this thing. So as you can see by the wrapper, that's why this is one of my favorite sandwiches. And I know on the surface, like roast pork, broccoli rabe, sharp provolone, doesn't seem like it'd create this amazing sandwich, but there's something that happens when it's put in a hoagie roll, steamed in that parchment paper, and then you add some pickled onions. It's just a truly, truly great sandwich that I would say is just as good, no doubt. I would say it's much better than a lot of versions that I've had in Philly. Um, but hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video. The recipe for this will be up on the website and it actually is fairly easy to make. I mean, you don't have to make the rolls if you don't want to. You could, you know, just buy some. And then really it's just the roast pork, um, saute broccoli rabe, that's super easy. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed. Um, thank you again to Yeti for sponsoring this video. It was super fun being able to hook up my friends with sandwiches, but then also getting them the lunch boxes. Um, so thank you again to Yeti. If you guys want to check out anything from them for the holidays this year, definitely check the link down below. But that's going to wrap it up for me in this one. Catch you all in the next one. Peace, y'all.